Band of Brothers, The Queen, and Care Bears are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is September 9th, 2022. It is the 252nd day of the year. You got 113 days left. It is the 36th Friday in the 36th week and the 81st day of summer, 13 days till fall. If today's your birthday, you're still a Virgo. Today is Share Your Care Day. This is a Care Bear holiday. Everybody knows the Care Bears, no matter what age you are, because either you played with them, your kids did, or your grandkids did. Care Bears been around a while. All Care Bears have a little symbol on their chest. Maybe it's a heart, maybe it's a flower, a moon, a shamrock, the sun, a star. And of course, one of them had a rainbow on their chest that caused some controversy back in the early 90s. People saying that the Care Bears were trying to promote homosexuality and all this other stuff. There was a serious jump in their popularity when this controversy started. Just kind of goes to show you when there's something you don't like, keep it to yourself. Because if you create a stink, it becomes more popular. Anyway, Care Bears are on a mission to spread caring and sharing around the world and encourages fans to spread caring and sharing love, friendship, acceptance, fun, and happiness to those they love every day. The Care Bear toy line was originally introduced in 1983 to caring fans everywhere. In the last 10 years alone, 90 million plush bears have been sold at retail. Care Bears are all unique, with each one having a specialized belly badge, as they call it, that represents his or her duty and personality, such as Tender Heart Bear, Harmony Bear, Share Bear, Cheer Bear, Grumpy Bear, among many others. Yeah, so share and care today, brought to you by a very successful toy line. All right, let's see what else. September 9th has given us. 1776, the Continental Congress officially names its Union of States as the United States. 1791, Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, is named after President George Washington. Some years later, a Pacific Northwest territory picked up an attitude, oh, you're going to name a city after the first president? Hold my drink. And now we have the state of Washington. 1850, the Compromise of 1850 transfers a third of Texas claimed territory, now parts of Colorado, Kansas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Wyoming, to federal control in return for U.S. federal government assuming 10 million of Texas's debt. 1942, World War II, a Japanese float plane drops incendiary bombs on Oregon. Now, I'd love to go into this one more because this is one of my favorite stories or whatever of World War II. The Japanese had tried several things like this, but I've talked about it before, so I'm just going to gloss over it real quick and not make it the deep dive. Basically, Japan thought that they could get to the Pacific Northwest, drop some firebombs on Oregon because it was completely wooded at the time, western half of it, and they thought they would set the whole state on fire and all that. Well, they didn't take into account how wet Oregon is and nothing really caught fire. Now, this was the first of several attempts. They also tried weather balloons that went halfway across the United States, all kinds of weird stuff. 1947, the first case of a computer bug being found. It was actually a moth lodged in a relay of a Harvard Mark II computer at Harvard University. 1966, the National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act is signed into law by US President Lyndon B. Johnson. <laughs> The National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act was an act that was designed to force automobile manufacturers to institute safety standards to protect the public from unreasonable risk of accident occurring as a result of design, construction, or operation of automobiles. By 1965, automobile accidents had become the leading cause of death for Americans under the age of 44. Both the government and manufacturers had largely ignored the issues. A series of high-profile accidents and some studies kind of came to the national forefront, and that sort of got the ball rolling. And then a kind of obscure, unknown lawyer named Ralph Nader emphasized the issue of automobile safety in his book in 1965 called Unsafe at Any Speed, which focused on the alleged defects of the Chevrolet Corvair, which that thing was a neat car. It was just very unsafe. My high school girlfriend had one and it was all redone and it was beautiful. So Nader's book grabbed the attention of the nation and it revealed that General Motors, the manufacturer of the Corvair, secretly employed detectives in an unsuccessful attempt to find personal dirt on Nader. One thing led to another and Congress had some hearings on the subject. There was overwhelming support by Congress and the United States population to pass some federal laws that made automobile manufacturers responsible 
for the safety of their products. Over the next decade, we got things like shoulder straps for our seat belts, collapsing steering columns, strengthening door latches, shatterproof windshields, a protective dashboard became mandated. It also had rules in there about fuel efficiency standards for new cars. By 1985, the New York Times asserted that those regulations had already saved more than 150,000 lives. In the late 70s, they had other mandates, and that kind of led to things like the airbag. 1971, the four-day Attica prison riot begins, eventually resulting in 39 dead, most killed by state troopers taking the prison back. 1972, in Kentucky's Mammoth Cave, Cave National Park, a cave research foundation, exploration and mapping team discovers a link between the Mammoth and Flint Ridge cave system, making it the longest known cave passageway in the world. 2015, Elizabeth II became the longest reigning monarch of the United Kingdom. And as we all know, she just passed away yesterday at the age of 96. I made a short about it. Very interesting woman and very interesting life. Movies released on September 9th, 2001, Band of Brothers. This is a seven-time Emmy Award-winning miniseries about Army soldiers in Europe during World War II. The show was based on Stephen Ambrose's 1992 book of the same name. Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks were both executive producers on the project. The show won a Golden Globe for Best Miniseries or Television Film. Such a good series. If you've never seen this, it's on HBO. Watch it. It's amazing. They had the follow-up one some years later, like a decade later. It was called The Pacific. Number one, I can't believe Band of Brothers is already 21 years old. That's amazing. The Pacific was good, and it's my understanding Spielberg and Tom Hanks are working on another one about World War II bomber crews. Born on September 9th, 1966, Adam Sandler, comedic actor who's best known for films like Billy Madison, The Waterboy, Mr. Deeds, The Wedding Singer, Happy Gilmore, and Big Daddy. I love The Wedding Singer, I loved Mr. Deeds, and I loved Big Daddy. I did not like Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison. He also voiced the character of Dracula in the Hotel Transylvania movies. He developed his comedic talents while attending New York University. Before breaking through in Hollywood, he worked as a comedian and appeared as a regular regular cast member on Saturday Night Live. In 1999, he founded a production company called Happy Madison, a title he created from combining the names of two of his films, Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. He's still turning out the films and he's got this weird contract with Netflix. Every time I turn around, he's got a new movie done on Netflix. Died on September 9th, 1997, we lost Burgess Meredith. Do you know who he was? He played Mick, the trainer on the Rocky movies. He also played the Penguin on Batman. He became the first man to win two Saturn Awards for Best Supporting Actor. He joined his first theater group in 1929 and then eventually got drafted into the army for World War II, but he was released early to film the story of G.I. Joe. Not the cartoon or toy, the actual movie called G.I. Joe. Burgess Meredith was born on November 16th, 1907 in Cleveland, Ohio. On September 9th, 1997, Meredith died at the age of 89 from complications of Alzheimer's disease and melanoma, and his remains were cremated. His friend Adam West, who played Batman in the 1960s series, spoke at his memorial service. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other. 